G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, the market is still moving up ever so slowly. I mean, Bitcoin has pulled back a little bit from where it was, but overall, things are pretty looking pretty good at the moment. So again, the overall market cap continues to climb. So we're getting close to that $1.8 trillion mark again. We were pretty close to there, you know, at least about a month or two ago, uh, getting really close to that $2 trillion mark. And that is unbelievable. Bitcoin dominance is actually dropping. ETH dominance is growing. But look, ETH gas prices are coming down. So it's going to be interesting to see if the layer two solutions and that really make a difference, particularly optimism and all that. And we've got a story coming up, but you know we can only hope so. But what I think of is if this layer two stuff works out, optimism and things like, you know, Polygon, Matic and all those kind of things, then I think Ethereum is going to absolutely fly. And then I think a number of the products, projects, sorry, like Cardano and Polkadot are gonna fall behind because that's really why people are moving to these projects, that they don't have the scaling kind of issues and the gas fees that Ethereum do. Once Ethereum gets on top of that, there's nothing stopping it. I mean, you know, obviously outside of some uh, fault in the code or something, which could still happen in Polkadot and Cardano. We just don't know. But as we can see, it's just green everywhere. It is looking fantastic. And, you know, if we can get these gas prices down to, you know, single digit type stuff, then that'll be even better. All right. So let's have a look. What's really pumped in the last 24 hours? All right. What do we got? Polygon. There we go. He's talking about them. And slash Matic, you know, depending on what you want to call them. They are Polygon now, but they used to be Matic. So they just continue to climb. They are doing extremely well. 40% uh, in seven days. Kasama doing very well. Avalanche, Amp, Pundi X. I mean, raging back into the top 100. I, I had Pundi X and I made a little bit of profit and I sold it because it just wasn't doing well enough. And yeah, what I'm finding out now is that sometimes you just need to have a couple of dollars. It's the tiny bit of skin in the game and just leave it there and let it run and see what happens. But in saying that, sometimes you can just find better projects uh, that may not moon as much in a short period of time like some of these do, but they go up by a lot more uh, over the sort of longer term. So again, you've got to work out your, your system. But I mean, look at this. These are some great double digit kind of moves. Phantom doing well, Bitmax token, Elrond, Pancake Swap, and really from Pancake Swap up, we're looking pretty good. And from Ravencoin, there we go, out of the blue, Ravencoin up, doing extremely well. All right, what hasn't done so well though? What's what's struggling at the moment? Nothing struggling. <laughs> I mean, Nem's gone down a little bit, but they had a really good pump. So again, you know, I don't think anyone from Nem's too worried unless you bought the top. Then that's always unfortunate and going to hurt a little bit. Engine Coin, of course, they're going to pull back. They had to up a hundred percent in seven days. Yeah, things can't go up like that forever. They always have a retracement. So if we're at a dollar sixty nine now. And there's no guarantees. This pump might not be over yet. There could be a whole lot more to come. But realistically, if we're up 100% and we've got to $1.69 over the seven days, I would fully expect this to retrace probably back down to about $1.20 uh, over the next you know few days to week or so. Unless this is just a small correction with inside a really big pump and engine continues to go. NFTs are crazy right now. Again, Chile's doing exactly the same thing. Have a look at them. They're up 290, that's 7%, there we go. That takes it to 300% in a week. So that's amazing. So of course they can have a pullback and this probably could fall back quite substantially. But we never know, Yearn Finance, bit of a pullback, Decentraland, uh, Uniswap, Ocean Protocol. But I mean, have a look at these losses. They're single digits and some of them are in the sort of high single digits, but really only a couple. What do we got? Four. And then the others are just in the low single digits. And low single digit losses in cryptocurrencies, that's nothing. That really is nothing. You hardly even notice that. And particularly if you lost 7%, but you're still up 293%, you aren't worried whatsoever. Don't get me wrong. If that comes down a whole lot more, then you can worry a little bit. But again, are you in it for the long term or was it just a quick flip? If it's a quick flip and it's gone up 300%, I'd probably cash out 50% of it right then and there. But that's me. That's what I would do. All right, so let's move on. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So here we are. So we just kept breaking those resistance points. So let's get rid of these lines now. We don't need these anymore. That's been broken. 
that's well and truly broken and that was broken quite some time ago all right but as i did say the other day we really need to break above this kind of 52,000 sorry 57,000 dollar mark and you know this wick is 50 sort of eight ish 57 and a half thousand thereabouts but what do we see here it looks like we've stalled a little bit but you know the day's not over yet but this is an indecision candle that's what we're seeing right now indecision candles green ones yep can go up quite often indecision red candles can break down but look nothing's guaranteed because we can go over here we've got an indecision red candle and it breaks to the upside but indecision candles are generally a worry for me it means a bigger move is coming now yes it can be to the upside on occasions here's a perfect example indecision candle and it broke to the upside but look a bit of indecision there downside indecision there fake out downside indecision uh, indecision there bit of a fake out downside so you know we just need to be careful with exactly uh, you know what we're looking at I do believe this is most likely part of a, our bigger next move upwards but we can't really say that until we break basically here so fifty seven and a half thousand if we can break there and again it's not a fake out because it could be a fake out and then we still roll lower I don't think that will happen but look who knows so that's really what I'm waiting for at the moment but some of the altcoins are doing quite well all right let's move on to the stories so there's been a lot of kerfuffle about um, you know mining uh, GPUs kind of sucking out you know sucking up all the supply of uh, CPUs sorry and GPUs no GPUs and making it really hard for the gamers so it looks like AMD is going to try and solve that problem so a US multinational semiconductor company could be preparing the ground to release its own series of crypto mining processes AMD is reportedly looking uh, into introduce looking to introduce a GPU for mining Ethereum and that all you know appease all the gamers because the gamers have been really upset that they haven't been able to get any GPUs to you know build their computers for gaming because the mining has been sucking them kind of dry and so this would probably be a really good idea and I wouldn't be surprised if AMD do extremely well all right moving on so German bank Donner and Ruschel to offer crypto custody services in response to a high mic market demand in the country cryptocurrency adoption among the traditional banking industry keeps spreading across the board and it has arrived at the bank based in Hamburg Germany Donner and Ruschel is set to make its inception into the crypto business by offering related custody services banks will also explore further Bitcoin uh, blockchain projects so I have absolutely no doubt about that there is word that Aave is being uh, adopted by some of the banking industries uh, I think it was over in Europe somewhere over there I mean they have a banking license or a financial license I should say not a banking license but a financial license in the UK and I wouldn't be surprised if we find out about are they doing the same in Asia I know they were moving into Asia and other parts of the world it is natural that that's really where they'll go they're not going to sit with just one banking license in Europe while they could make plenty of money there they will look to diversify and banks will simply jump on the board banks will uh, their back end will be done by you know platforms like Aave and amongst other things that that's where the future of finance is going in my opinion and again never financial advice just my personal opinion that's all I offer you all right this one was really interesting so Portuguese authorities contemplate launching an investigation on local crypto social media influencers. Portuguese authorities are, rep are reportedly planning to take action against social media influencers who provide advice on crypto related in investments. There's upsides to that because there's lots of dodgy players out there but there's downsides to that because there's some really good people out there in the space that are giving really good information traditional governments and finances might not agree and like it but look there are good people out there and I'd like to think I'm one of them but you know I'm not here to kind of you know spruik myself you make your own mind up whether you think uh, you know what my opinions are are valid or not and if you don't I'm guessing you won't watch the channel and if you do then congratulations thank you very much I appreciate you uh, supporting my channel speaking of please go down and hit the like button that's a great way to support my channel all right now it says here a crypto youtuber is already in the authorities loop 
but it, get, but it does go down to say here, a source told local media outlet that there is still there is no investigation underway as they're trying first to assess the magnitude of the matter. But unless the you know this person on YouTube has literally just been spruiking scam platforms and you know all sorts of stuff. This is just someone giving some personal opinion. And again, I mean, hopefully they understand that you need to remind everyone that you're not providing financial advice, as I do and all the good YouTubers do. And if they haven't been doing that and they've really been, you know, pumping sort of scam, cheap, uh, cheap shitty coins, then yeah, I suppose maybe they do have a bit of a case to, to answer. Uh, and I completely agree. There's, a, there's some moral standards that need to be upheld. Uh, and for me... I just enjoy doing this and that's mainly why I do it. I don't make any money from YouTube uh, doing it. You know, hopefully in the future that's something that might happen. But even if it doesn't, this is just really an outlet for me. I get on here, I get to talk about something I really love, projects that I'm really into. And you know, some people watch my videos and it makes me feel pretty good. And every now and then someone hits the like button as well. All right, moving on. So... Solution to scale Ethereum 100x is imminent and will get us through until ETH 2.0, says Vitalik. So Vitalik Buterin believes roll-ups will solve Ethereum scaling woes until the introduction of ETH 2.0 sharding. And again, so that's the full ETH 2.0 rollout and that's still a little ways away. Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin believes the network is on the verge of scaling by a factor of 100 predicting the optimism will release its layer 2 solution in the coming weeks. That is going to be great. There's so many DeFi projects that I just, I've been priced out, I, I cannot use them. Synthetics Network, Aave, uh, Kyber Network, you name it, pretty much anything to do with Ethereum of late, I just I haven't been able to use it. The fees have been way too much. So, you know, optimistic roll-ups, can't wait get it done and then you know once we move on from there and they move on to you know full ETH 2.0 well look out I'm not sure what's going to hold Ethereum back after that again outside of some bug in the system that just hasn't been discovered yet but you know we'll have to wait and see you know the old ETH, uh, ETH 1.0 I would say that's fairly battle tested ETH 2.0 not so much I mean it hasn't even been fully rolled out yet so how can it be completely battle tested and that's really the thing that will hang over Ethereum's head until it has been around for a while and it is battle tested. But I have faith, I'd like to think Ethereum is going to do extremely well. But I have my backup plans for if it doesn't. And again, my backup plans are things like uh, Cosmos. I have a bit of Cosmos. I'll probably get some more at some stage. Polkadot, Cardano. They're really my backup plans. But look, things like Hedera Hashgraph have really been growing and other platforms as well. Tezos. Uh, although it has, I haven't heard too much about Tezos for a while. You know, maybe they can do something. You know, Binance Chain, you know, which is very similar to Ethereum, but um, on the Cosmos uh, tendermints on the network and all that. So again, we'll have to wait and see. And that's the kind of investor I am, as I like to hedge my bets. I generally don't go all well, not generally. I don't go all into any one thing, uh, full stop. I may have, you know, gone all into crypto. But I didn't go all into one project as I believe crypto is here to stay. There's a number of projects that will do well. But really, yeah, outside of that, I wouldn't go all into one thing. Like, you know, if you were to go in all into one thing in crypto, I guess, you know, what some people would say the smart idea would be Bitcoin because it's been around so long. But even then, you know, what happens if Bitcoin, there's no fault in the code or anything like that. It just simply gets surpassed by something else. Then you've put all your money into just one thing that's not performing that well anymore. Again, that's me. That's my investment theory. You know, if you agree with it and like that idea, uh, let me know down below. Love to know your thoughts. Or are you the kind of investor that just, you know, does their research, finds something and just goes all in to one thing? You know, maybe it was Matic Polygon, something like that. I know Matic is up, I think, tw yeah. 1200% uh, since I got in and I got in at a peak and I watched it go down so I can Im only imagine what other people uh, who got into it at a better price than me uh, must be at because I watched my uh, Matic go down by nearly 50% at a couple of stages there so yeah anyway what can you do moving on game changer all right game changer for maker and ethereum with optimism die bridge announced 
So the DAI stablecoin produced by a decentralized lending protocol, MakerDAO, is getting some speed and fee enhancement with its forthcoming upgrade to Layer 2. So more about the optimistic roll-ups. Ethereum scaling solution provider Optimism will provide the technology as announced on the the MakerDAO forum on March 9th. Co-founder and CTO of gaming firm Bellwood Studios, Sam McPherson, explained the MakerDAO community will be launching an official DAI on Optimism L2 and that the Optimism DAI bridge would offer improvements on other implementations. So this whole scaling thing is really heating up. I just knew that, you know, when everyone was the most sort of doubtful about, you know, scaling and all the rest of it and the gas fees, and that's including me because I was super doubtful. I really was almost to the point where I was just like, I don't know if I can afford to stay in anything that's Ethereum anymore. And now we get this news. And that's generally the way it works all the time. It's at the darkest hour when there's the most upside. And it's usually at the darkest hour, all of a sudden there'll be some news and it'll turn things around. Doesn't always happen like that, but a majority of the time it happens like that, at least from my personal experience. Unless something's really just about to die, then at the darkest hour, it's just literally about to kill right over. So be very careful. All right, JP Morgan. So launching crypto exposure basket featuring MicroStrategy and Square. I'm really actually I'm really interested in this. I do want to get into some stocks, and I think this is something that I would get into. So the financial services giant has filed paperwork with the SEC to launch a debt instrument linked to 11 uh, crypto-focused firms. The instrument allocates 20% to MicroStrategy, the data analysis firm with 91,000 Bitcoin on its balance sheet. It also provides direct exposure to Square and Riot Blockchain, two companies with significant exposure to Bitcoin. And also uh, NVIDIA Corporation and PayPal Holdings each account for 15% of the basket. So this sounds really, really good. Again, once I finally do get back into stocks, this is what I'll be looking to get into. I mean, I, I could start scaling into some of them, you know, as soon as they come out. But I just, I don't know if they will provide the same returns that cryptocurrencies will. But again, we'll have to wait and see. Stocks really haven't ever been my thing. I've been, I've been in them because I was forced to be in them, but once I found that there was a choice and I could get into other things, then obviously that was cryptocurrencies for me. All right, DeFi hacks, they just continue, so please be very careful, particularly with new products. Yes, they could, a thousand X and a million X, and you could become an absolute, you know, quadrillionaire or whatever you, you know, trillionaire, whatever it may be, but they just don't have any history behind them, and they, you know, there can be bugs. So here we go. Several V2 crowd pools belonging to the decentralized exchange and liquidity provider Dodo Dex were exploited in a new DeFi related hack. The attack targeted several V2 crowd pools and the stolen amount could go as high as 3.8 million. So that's really unfortunate for anyone who's in there and particularly uh, if they got hacked and lost stuff. Again, this is why I never put everything into any one thing because, you know, you Someone may have invested in this and thought, this is going to the moon, this is solid, this is going to be the next big thing, and then this happens. It's not to say it can't come back from that. There have been platforms that have been hacked and came back and done quite well, but at the moment they're probably really hurting because these stocks have probably gone down and they've probably lost, uh, you know, hopefully not everything that they put into it. But that is one of the things that we need to be careful of. And so I do say that, you know, when investing, please do some research. You don't have to know everything about, you know, what it is that you're going to put money into. But in all honesty, the more you know, the more informed you are, the better the decision that you're going to make. That's just the way it works. And that's with life in general. It's not just investing. But I do understand that sometimes you don't have time to go and investigate something to the absolute nth degree. But the more you can do, the better. Right, Twitter. This was uh, quite strange considering Twitter is run by Jack Dorsey and, you know, he's quite a crypto enthusiast. An interesting twist of events. Twitter, the social media platform spearheaded by Jack Dorsey, one of Bitcoin's most influential proponents, has now suspended some major cryptocurrency related accounts. As far as I know, most of these are all back online. But yeah, it would be interesting to find out what happened. So Tone Vase was one, Plan B, uh, there was another number of other, you know, big Twitter cryptocurrency pages, I don't know, channels, vlogs, blogs, whatever you want to call them, 
uh, accounts. Yeah, it's right there. Accounts that got suspended, and they don't know why. They didn't receive any information. So was it a bug? Was this something that was sort of planned? Who knows? But good to know that they're back. All right. So we're all bullish on Bitcoin, but it seems a lot of U.S. retailers, uh, they're more bullish on Cardano. So a new report by Voyager Digital suggests that retail investors are more bullish on Cardano than Bitcoin. Nevertheless, 80% of retail investors plan to buy more Bitcoin in March. So there you go. Sounds like Bitcoin will continue to do well, but sounds like Cardano might do extremely well. I mean, look, if you've been around for a little while, you probably know that you know a lot of the altcoins, not all of them, but a lot of them, no, actually, I won't say a lot, a number of them, because it, it's definitely a number, but maybe not a lot. But a number of the altcoins will well outperform Bitcoin. Plain and simple. But they're the ones that are generally pretty good and got some hype behind them. Not always so good. Sometimes it can be nothing more than hype. But Bitcoin's the safest bet. It still goes up by a substantial amount and it goes down by the least amount. So again, while Bitcoin may retrace, may retrace 85% at some stage, it's done it before, the altcoins, they can literally retrace 99%. So you can lose almost everything that you ever made. And if you didn't buy in at the absolute bottom, then you lose. You actually go into the minuses. So yeah, that is a worry for uh, investors, a definite worry. You know, getting into altcoins. But Bitcoin, yeah, it's the safest of them so far. It's not to say it'll always remain that way, but that's probably... A reasonable place if you're getting invested in crypto to hold you know for me I would say at least probably 30% of you know everything that you have into Bitcoin if not maybe more uh, for me I think I currently have around about 30% in Bitcoin probably got about another 30% in Ethereum and then the last kind of 40 ish percent I, I don't even think it's that I think it's I think my ETH is actually more so I, I'd say I got about 20% of my entire portfolio uh, in a variety of different altcoins, but the bulk of my my holdings, it's Bitcoin and Ethereum, because I just think they're the safest bets. But that's me. You again, you got to make up your own mind. Don't just simply take my word for it. Do your own research. Get some other advice. Get some other varying opinions. That's always a good idea. Right. Last but not least, Grayscale. So behind leading Bitcoin, sorry, Grayscale firm behind leading Bitcoin Trust is hiring ETF specialists. All right, so maybe they're going to get an ETF out there. So digital asset manager, management firm Grayscale might be on the cusp of trying to launch a Bitcoin exchange traded fund, according to new job postings. The nine postings strongly suggest the New York based firm is planning an ETF business. The listings are un, undated, but the firm tweeted a link to its jobs board Tuesday evening, so not that long ago. The posting, the job postings, all refer to Grayscale's ETF business. Through the, although, sorry, the firm does not currently offer any exchange traded products. God, I struggle with the simple, basic English language sometimes. I do apologise for that, but you're probably getting used to it by now. That is very interesting. I wouldn't be surprised if they came out with a Grayscale ETF. It's really, I mean, there's a number of places that are going to put one out there. It really is just down to you know who. Uh, the US government is going to allow to have one because a lot of people have put ones forward and so far no one's been able to get one. But they are still starting to happen in other places around the world and America sits, won't simply sit by and let them you know, miss out on that. Anyway, all right, I won't take up any more of your time. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. Bitcoin really needs to get above that, you know, 57,500 mark for this to truly be, you know, us moving into new price territory. If it doesn't do that, we could roll over and go lower. It's a possibility. But that's it from me. I'll see you next time.